Spoilers! If you haven't seen the first episode of Prehistoric Planet and care about being spoiled about the inclusion of some critters, stay away from this video till you've seen it. This video was made by using my own knowledge, scientific papers, as well as the words of the people involved with the show itself. This is in no way meant to provide undue criticism towards the hard work that went into the show. In fact, there are very little instances where it may come off as me saying that something is wrong. As I am not an expert on every single group of animals, living or extinct, I used the words of other experts that may know the given organism better than I. Many criticisms are merely nitpicking and do not affect the quality of the overall show, and many are also debatable. I used the words provided by lead paleontological consultant Dr. Darren Nash via his Twitter threads discussing the designs and design philosophy of all the animals in Prehistoric Planet to construct a more fleshed out scientific discussion than the show provides. Obviously, the show is meant to be more visual and myth-breaking or trope-busting than purely informational or educational. It does deliver a good amount of scientific information, but only that which is absolutely needed in the context of the scene or episode. I think a lot of people wanted more thorough explanations of why some animals were reconstructed the way they were, especially considering how strongly updated they are with speculative but scientifically rooted displays, behaviors, and tissues because of the stranglehold the 80s and 90s nostalgia-fueled outdated reconstructions have on most dinosaur-related media. So, please take all this into consideration when watching my scientific reviews of Prehistoric Planet. I was not aware of any information that may come out after the writing, recording, editing, or publication of these videos that may counter any issues I bring up with the dinosaurs of Prehistoric Planet. As of the writing of this preamble, no full-length documentaries or discussion of the behind-the-scenes work on the series has come out. Some rather short tidbits on the location filming, philosophy, and computer animation work have been released, but this does not entail the full breadth of the project. Barbary Dactylus Design our last pterosaur continues the trend of this Moroccan dig site with very little substantive skeletal remains. Barbary Dactylus is another nyctosaurid pterosaur, but much larger than any of the remains known of Alcyone. The most complete specimen, also the holotype, is a femur, a radius, ulna, humerus, the shoulder blade, and a chunk of the lower jaw. All other specimens are humeri. Kinda sucks, man. For those that may complain about showing off this ecosystem of partial pterosaurs, I must note the creators are trying to show the unique nature of the ecosystem as well as the diversity in pterosaur body forms more than they are trying to recreate these specific genera of pterosaurs perfectly. It also just so happens that these reconstructions are spot on in comparison to pterosaurs known from more complete remains. So criticism, though somewhat warranted, is largely moot in this particular case. Barbary Dactylus is shown here with the typical nyctosaurid body plan, complete with a tuning fork style antler crest jutting out the back of the skull, similar to Nyctosaurus itself. Since the full skull of Barbary Dactylus is unknown, they went with a different shape of the crest to Nyctosaurus but kept the overall antler idea to better provide a compare and contrast to the other pterosaurs in the segment. The uncovered segment for the Desert's episode, which has a sequence dedicated to Barbary Dactylus, shows a completely fabricated skull of Barbary Dactylus in the museum library set with David. Though this skull is based on other close relatives and probably isn't that far off from the real Barbary Dactylus skull, I do think it should have been pointed out that it is hypothetical. I think it would have been a good opportunity to compare it with the known skull of Nyctosaurus to explain why they went with a Nyctosaurus style head crest and why they did not do a segment with Nyctosaurus itself. The reason being that Nyctosaurus lived 87 to 82 million years ago along the Western Interior Seaway, thus making it out of reach of the time frame for the series. You can't really tell their color scheme or the level of feathering due to the lighting of the scene 
when they appear again in the Desert episode, I'll touch on that. Behavior In this sequence, Barbary Dactylus was shown as a major predator to the Alcyone hatchlings as they fly to the forest. Is there direct evidence of this from the Moroccan phosphate deposits? Well, no. There is barely enough to reconstruct some of these pterosaurs as is. Is there direct evidence that pterosaurs predated upon other pterosaurs? As far as I can find, there are no fossils of pterosaur bones within the gut cavity of another pterosaur. However, pterosaur remains are generally rare, so this is not a surprise. Some must have eaten other pterosaurs, and hatchlings would have been the easiest. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Ray, Isaiah Garza, Dinosaur, Christoph Hubinger, Biotiverse, and Arda Bayer. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons, The Dogman, Iron Bladesman, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.